Hello and welcome back to the channel Airbus uh, What's It Doing Now and today we're going to take a look at one of the uh, articles in Safety First uh, Airbus magazine and uh, this event focuses on rotation rate. Um, it looks at a case study initially of an Airbus A340 uh, long takeoff, uh, looks at the event description and takes a look at the event analysis and this is all really highlighting the importance of correct rotation rate and the compromise on performance if we don't get that right in this particular case study involved the aircraft getting very very low over the um, over the departure uh, end of the uh, runway um, so after the event uh, analysis we're going to take a look at some of the performance elements concerning the how the takeoff distance is calculated and some performance factors that go into that. I think that's a, a really useful uh, exercise and puts some gravity on the importance of getting that uh, rotation rate uh, correct. Looks how it's calculated on two engines, which is really significant, and also on Four engined aircraft and just how the, the how the differences apply so it's, it's quite an eye-opener actually um, and then we're going to take a look at the uh, takeoff rotation laws on fly-by-wire aircraft now some of you will be familiar with the rotation laws uh, and the differences between the CEO and the NEO in terms of the sort of pitch rate limitation or the pitch rate assistance that we get uh, on the uh, NEO um, as a bit of a side, I'm going to reference very briefly the uh, the uh, OEB uh, 59, uh, which concerns unreliable airspeed and the NEO specifically, but I'm not going to go into it in great detail here. I'm just going to make reference to it because I'm going to cover that in a, um, in a separate episode. So we take a look at that um, uh, rotation assistance uh, and the difference between the CEO and the NEO and how that works. And then we'll look at the uh, tail strike pitch limit indication uh, for the uh, 320 aircraft uh, as well. And then we'll finish off with just a revision and a reminder of the correct technique um, and why that's uh, and why that's uh, and why that's important. So those of you that have been with the channel uh, for a while uh, will have seen these safety first uh, safety corner presentations before and I like to do them as a bit of a podcast so I'll read through it uh, and then uh, add some meat to the bone and elaborate uh, where necessary and then I'll be putting uh, some graphics up and around the screen to assist you if you're watching this but of course if you're uh, in the car uh, you can just uh, listen on through uh, these are available to anybody if you go on to uh, airbus uh, safety magazine if you type in safety first uh, in google uh, you'll be able to pick this uh, article up so I'm, I'm just accessing here what's readily available to you with just um, a little bit of further explanation where i see it uh, see it necessary so a focus on the rotation at uh, takeoff, an appropriate takeoff rotation maneuver is balanced between good takeoff performance and sufficient margin versus tail strike, stall speed and minimum uh, control speed. Applying the three degrees per second rotation rate requested in the SOP is key to ensure that the aircraft meets the expected takeoff performance and we'll look at how that's calculated a little later on. Flight data monitoring shows that the rotation rate values in service vary and a slower rotation rate is observed in some cases with the associated degradation in takeoff performance. Now, in training, in line training particularly, we really focus on this rotation rate and I think sometimes we focus on it being a little bit too quick, but being too slow has penalties as well that are just as important and just as uh, potentially dangerous. Um, so this is where we're gonna uh, play, uh, look at our focus. This article describes both the takeoff rotation laws available on Airbus fly-by-wire aircraft and the recommended rotation techniques that will enable flight crew to achieve a consistent takeoff rotations at the requested uh, takeoff rate. So. Uh, we'll look at the technique and some of the assistance that pilots can have on the uh, on the 320 fleet. 
So we'll start off then with the case study on the A340. So I know this is a 320 channel, but uh, a lot of the things in here are, are consistent across the fleet and um, you know, have the same gravity. So let's take a look into it. So the event description on a 340 case study, long takeoff. Uh, so we'll start with the event description, a takeoff from a high altitude airport, uh, 8,360 feet. So that's obviously quite significant in terms of performance and um, I think exacerbated the situation here somewhat. So an A340-300 was performing a takeoff from a high altitude airport. A toga thrust takeoff uh, in Config 2 uh, was selected. The takeoff performance was calculated for a four knot tailwind and was limited by runway length. Takeoff run in one engine in operative condition. I'll explain more of that uh, in a moment. The gross weight of the aircraft was 236.9 tonnes and was close to maximum takeoff weight of 237 tonnes uh, in the conditions of the day. So you can see how all this is uh, building up. Yeah, sort of Swiss cheese effect, as it were. Um, so an uneventful takeoff roll. So the aircraft reached V1, which was 128 knots some 54 seconds after brake release and toga thrust application. The pilot flying then initiated the rotation uh, close to VR and the nose landing gear lifted off the ground one second later and the pitch began to increase. Um, so that's fairly consistent and fairly normal uh, so far. Okay, so the next paragraph, a late takeoff. So V2, which was 149 knots, was reached with the aircraft still on the ground. So the rotation rate or rotation was initiated close to VR at 149 knots, which is what, 20 knots later, uh, the aircraft was still on the ground, the main landing gear was still compressed and the aircraft had a pitch of four degrees up at this point. Liftoff occurred 11 seconds later after rotation initiation at 155 knots and only 140 meters from the end of the runway with a recorded pitch up of just nine degrees. So in, in, in all that time, in the 11 seconds, we reached nine degrees nose up and we went from 129 knots to 155 knots and um, only getting airborne some 140 meters from the end of the runway with a recorded pitch of uh, nine degrees. So the runway end was overflown at a six foot radio altitude. The aircraft flew over the runway end at a six foot radio altitude and then overflew the end of the clearway, which remember is the portion at the uh, upwind end of the uh, runway. Uh, that is clear of obstacles at 20 feet radio altimeter and then avoided the localizer antennas by only 12 feet. The aircraft eventually reached 35 feet, uh, ran out some 550 meters after the runway end. The landing gear was selected up three seconds later at 135 feet ran out with a vertical speed of 1300 feet a minute, pitched now at 12 degrees and speed at 160 knots. The aircraft continued its climb and completed its flight uneventfully. Well, uneventfully from there on. Um, despite what seemed to be what seemed to be a standard takeoff roll, the aircraft lifted off the runway very late, overflying the localizer antenna located at the end of the clearway with very little clearance. So how did this happen? Well, let's take a look at the event analysis, a normal aircraft acceleration performance until VR. Everything fairly standard at this point. The analysis of the flight data recorder, or DF, um, DR, Digital Flight Data Recorder, uh, showed that the aircraft acceleration was in accordance with the expected performance in the conditions on the day reported as a wet runway with four knot tailwind. Slow rotation rate during the takeoff. The side stick inputs ordered by the pilot flying during rotation resulted in an average rotation rate of one degree uh, per second. So that really is quite low, isn't it? Um, Airbus SOP requests three degrees rotation rate per second. This slow rotation rate resulted in a degraded takeoff performance 
which remember the takeoff performance is after the rotation as well, in, in including um, after the departure end of the runway. This slow rotation rate resulted in degraded takeoff performance, leading to a significant increase in the total takeoff distance. And that's the important thing to remember. So the requested takeoff rotation rate value and the uh, origin of the requested rotation rate. The rotation rate, um, so this is a bit of background now how this has come about. So the rotation rate that is used to compute the takeoff performance was determined during takeoff performance flight test campaign together with the airworthiness authorities. This value uh, is the average of the rotation rates recorded during all of the tests aircraft takeoffs performed in a variety of operating conditions. The requested three degrees per second rate was the value selected and is applicable to all Airbus aircraft except the 220, which has between three and five degrees, so very different. The value uh, ensured that the actual takeoff distance uh, is closest to the computed distance. If the pilot flying applies a rotation rate that is lower than the requested rotation rate, the aircraft may not take off according to the computed performance, leading to an increased takeoff distance and decreased obstacle clearance. So it's very clear there, isn't it, that a low rotation rate has a significant impact on performance and safety margin. Um, rotation rate too slow in some takeoffs. The next paragraph, the flight data monitoring shows that the rotation rate values recorded in service vary. A low rotation rate with an associated takeoff performance degradation was observed in some cases. Safety margins used in takeoff performance computation prevent any significant problems in most cases. However, these margins may not be sufficient in certain situations as can be seen in the event described uh, above and a pretty horrible situation there as well maximum weight high airport elevation um, it is why flight crews should always perform the takeoff rotation at a rate close as possible to the requested takeoff rotation rate and this is especially important in conditions where performance is limited by runway length or obstacle uh, clearance and and environmental conditions of course um, so let's have a look and see how this is computed, actually, because I, I think this is really interesting. Um, a significant impact on takeoff performance. So a rotation rate lower than the requested three degrees per second in SOP significantly increases the takeoff distance. For example, a takeoff performed with two degrees per second rotation rate increases the takeoff distance by approximately 300 meters, which is nearly a thousand feet compared to the correct three degrees per second rate. So that, that's, that's, um, that's quite significant, isn't it? You know, you can't ignore that. As I'm, as I'm reading through this, um, I'm going to be putting some graphics up as well, just to show some um, examples of what we're talking about here. I guess these are lifted straight out of the article as well, right? These aren't my drawings. Um, so takeoff distance margins, this is how it's calculated. We look at a two engine case and a four engine case, because they're very different actually. Um, so takeoff distance margins, the regulatory takeoff distance on a dry runway is calculated by taking the greatest value of. Now, the takeoff distance computed with one engine failure happening just prior to reaching V1. So that's takeoff distance N minus one. So that's takeoff distance with one engine failed. Or the takeoff distance computed with all engines operative, that's T-O-D-N, with an additional margin of 15%. So the takeoff distance drives the greater of the uh, takeoff distance with one engine failure or the takeoff distance with a safety factor of 1.15. So with a twin engine aircraft, the takeoff distance is often provided and limited by the takeoff distance with one engine failure because of the loss of half of its thrust strongly impacts the takeoff distance, which is different to a four engine aircraft, but I'll come on to that in a minute. This calculation provides additional safety margin for takeoff with both engines operative. So the limiting factor on a, on a twin engine aircraft is a single engine takeoff distance. So with both engines, you've got a, a nice safety margin. Um, while the, perform, while the pilot flying should perform the requested rotation rate of three degrees per second in all conditions, 
it's even more important in the case of an engine failure during the takeoff because there is no additional margin for the calculated takeoff distance. And that's an important thing to remember. And when we looked at the engine failure on takeoff and the FCTM advice on the takeoff um, rotation rate with single engine, they keep it consistent at the um, three degrees per second. So then we move on to four engine aircraft. A four engine aircraft, the takeoff distance is often sized by, I say sized, it's computed uh, by the factored takeoff distance with all engine operative because the takeoff distance with one engine and operative is often uh, the shortest as it's computed with a loss of thrust limited to a quarter of the um, total available thrust. So achieving the requested rotation rate of three degrees per second is especially important uh, in daily operations, i.e. when four engines are operative, because this condition is usually the limiting factor and therefore does not provide additional margin on top of the uh, 1.15 factor. So some quite interesting things there really. So as a reminder there of performance, how it's calculated, uh, and a reminder of why the takeoff rotation rate is important and the, the impact that it has on takeoff performance and the fact that uh, particularly with four engine aircraft there, there really is no margin uh, because the normal conditions will usually be your sizing or your limiting factor. Okay, takeoff rotation laws available on fly-by-wire aircraft. We have to be a little bit careful about the terminology here because I've always referenced the, the, the NEO as having rotation law, but of course what it really has is it um, has um, rotation law pitch target rate. Uh, it's normally, it's a rate actually. All the aircraft commonly have rotation law, but it might be direct or it might have a pitch rate assistance, which is what the NEO has. So they, they talk about it in a slightly different way in terms of the ter terminology here, but I'll read it straight out and I'll give you some further explanation. So rotation law is available on fly-by-wire aircraft. The rotation, uh, the takeoff rotation law helps with likelihood to perform the optimum takeoff rotation. The takeoff rotation law consists of both the rotation law and tail strike prevention functions. Now, some of these are available on 320, some of them are available on, on the larger aircraft, um, but we'll talk about that now. There are different types of takeoff rotation law depending on the aircraft model. So you've got rotation assistance on the 320 um, CEO, 330 CEO, and 340, 300 and 200 uh, variants. So the rotation law, direct law, this is a direct relationship between the side stick deflection and the elevator deflection on these aircraft models. So go back to, for, for us, the 320 CEO uh, rotation law is a direct law relationship. I think we're familiar with that. The rotation rate obtained by a fixed side stick deflection value may vary noticeably with different operating conditions, such as aircraft weight, center of gravity position, slats, flap configuration, engine thrust, and takeoff speeds. So this is a direct relationship, but the result will depend on those factors. Tail strike prevention, pitch rate limit function on the 320 CEO, 330, and 340, 200. A limitation function reduces the pitch up command sent to the elevators to reduce the risk of tail strike in the case of excessive pitch rate. This pitch rate limitation function does not provide tail strike protection. If a nose up input is maintained on the side stick, a tail strike can still occur. So it's not going to stop it from happening. The tail strike protection function, which is a 340-300 only, I'll read this because it's quite interesting. A tail strike protection function uh, estimates the rear fuselage clearance margin based on radio altimeter height and pitch uh, attitude. This function modulates the nose up order sent to the elevator when the clearance of the tail to the ground becomes too small, or it calculates it becomes too small. The function protects the aircraft against tail strike for an average side stick deflection values until the side stick deflection reaches approximately three quarter nose up order. The pilot fly can override this protection by pulling back on the side stick beyond three quarter nose up. So that's quite a cool uh, protection because these are much longer aircraft. So then we've got rotation assistance on the 320 NEO, 330 NEO. 
350 and 380 aircraft. This is what we understand to be the sort of um, rotation law protection, if you like. It's just called pitch rate. On these aircraft, the rotation law ensures that an equivalent and repeatable rotation rate is achieved for a given side stick deflection so that we have a consistent rotation rate with a side stick deflection take into effect all of those other parameters and in and independent of the variable operating conditions such as aircraft weight center of gravity flap slack configuration engine thrust and takeoff speeds so that's what we know to be the rotation law on the neo um, that enables a consistent rotation rate to enable us to achieve this three degrees per second. Now, I mentioned earlier on about OEB 59, and I'm gonna talk more about that, but I'm gonna mention it here because it's quite important that the OEB 59 relates, if you don't know what that is, um, uh, if you don't operate NEO aircraft, it won't apply to you, the OEB 59, but if you do, it's specific to the NEO because of this pitch rate target, um, it needs, uh, reliable airspeed information, consistent reliable airspeed information in order to make that calculation. If that airspeed isn't reliable uh, and isn't consistent, then obviously it has an impact on the effectiveness of, the, of that system. Um, and, and so that's why the OEB 59 came out. There's going to be some modifications, I think, to um, ELAC standards, I think, I think, which is going to eradicate OEB uh, 59. Um, that's obviously a work in progress, but that's why OEB 59 was brought out specific to the NEO because of this pitch rate target in the rotation law. It doesn't apply to the CEO. Unreliable airspeed, of course, applies to anything, uh, but it's just this uh, OEB 59 specific to the NEO because of this pitch rate target. Uh, tail strike protection function, a tail strike protection function similar to the one available on the 340 300 is also available uh, on these aircraft 320neo and as you can see I've got a, a picture here for you. So the tail strike pitch limit indication at takeoff um, on the 330 340 family aircraft. So the tail strike pitch limit indication is currently displayed at takeoff and landing on those aircraft 340 and 380. The tail strike pitch limit was an option on earlier models of 330 CEOs, but was later installed as standard on 330s from the mid-2013. 320, 321, 330 and 350 aircraft also have pitch limit, but it's only displayed on landing because it's not necessary at takeoff. There is no tail strike pitch limit indication on the 18 and 19 neck. And now we'll be familiar with this is that amber um, v uh, which appears um, during uh, during landing there's no tail strike pitch limit on the 318 and 319 aircraft because these aircraft have shorter fuselage and less risk of tail strike so why don't we have this on takeoff then so removing the tail strike pitch limit for takeoff in service experience showed that when the tail strike pitch limit indicator appears on the display, it may cause the pilot flying to unnecessarily reduce the rotation rate of the aircraft during takeoff and prevent the aircraft from reaching the requested three degrees per second rotation rate. So crews are starting their rotation rate as normal and conventional. They see the pitch limit indicator go, and then, uh, and then reduce that rate, I guess. As a result, Airbus decided to deactivate the tail strike pitch limit indicator at takeoff and to keep it activated only on landing for all aircraft models. So you see there's a work in progress with this uh, rotation rate after in-service events. The tail strike protection function provided, uh, proved to provide 340, 300, 345 and 6 and 380 with sufficient tail strike protection. The pitch rate limit function on the 330 CEO aircraft combined with tail strike margin is sufficient protection against all risks of tail strike. Deactivation of the tail strike pitch limit indicator for takeoff will be performed at the next at the opportunity of the next 330 340 flight my, flight management guidance and envelope computer FMGEC or 380 flight control guidance computer FCGC uh, update. So they're removing it. So at the next updates it won't be there.
Uh, rotation assistance on 220 aircraft. I'm not going to read that because um, it's all gobbledygook. It's not important for us. Uh, the takeoff rotation uh, technique. So just a reminder here of the correct technique. And I've got a little uh, picture here as well, just to sort of uh, um, add some gravity to it all. The technique common to all fly-by-wire and non-fly-by-wire aircraft. A similar technique is used in all air Airbus aircraft. It can be found in the FCOM SOPs and additional information provided in the FCTM. Step one, initiate the rotation. This, this, is, this is a nice little summary here because it, it reminds us of the procedure, but it also reminds us how to do it and what it should look like, which is really what this channel is all about. Uh, when the aircraft reaches VR, rotate, the pilot uh, flying should apply one positive backward side stick uh, or, or on the control column input to initiate the rotation okay standard stuff step two and this is the important thing here i think is you use the outside visual references to achieve and maintain the rotation rate so you will look when you're looking outside during rotation use your horizon or what horizon you've got to assess that rate of rotation after the pilot flying initiates the rotation, they should use outside visual references to achieve and maintain that consistent rotation rate. Adjustments may be necessary to achieve and maintain the required rotation rate, um, particularly on 320 CEOs or 320 aircraft. There is that tendency to sort of hang around 10 degrees because of the tailplane going into what, what some people call ground effect. Um, so you'll only know that by looking outside if it starts to slow down then you need to apply a little bit more side stick or control column whichever is your aircraft time so the pilot flying initiate rotations they should use the outside visual references to achieve and maintain uh, the rotation rate adjustments may be necessary to achieve and maintain the required rotation rate on aircraft with uh, direct rotation law or non fly by wear aircraft the flight crew should adapt to the takeoff conditions on the day on on aircraft that have pitch rate rotation law, uh, NEO, uh, the law assists the flight crew to achieve an equivalent rotation in all conditions. So what it's saying there really is CEO aircraft don't have that uh, law, in which case you have to make more adjustment in order to, to make that uh, consistent rotation rate, but you're still looking outside. And on the NEO, there you have that that law then which will assist you in having a consistent rotation rate but you still need to apply consistent back pressure you still need to look outside to make sure that you're achieving that three degrees per second um, with a suitable rotation rate the aircraft typically lifts off at approximately four to five uh, seconds after the pilot flying initiates the rotation rate and when the pitch reaches approximately 10 degrees step three Target initial pitch attitude after liftoff and then follow the flight director guidance. When the aircraft is airborne, the pilot flying should adjust the pitch attitude towards initial pitch target, uh, which is provided in the FCOM 15 degrees, two engines, 12 and a half degrees uh, for one engine on the 320. Uh, 220 aircraft, it talks about something else, we won't bother with that. And then follow the flight director. So, good. So, uh, that's a really useful exercise that uh, studying the uh, the the incident there on the, the rotation of the long takeoff of the 340 why it's really important to keep that consistent three degrees per second how the performance is calculated so it gives us a little bit of gravity and how we actually achieve that rotation rate with the sort of the direct law or the pitch rate assistance that we get uh, on the uh, 320 neo hope that's helpful for you guys um, thanks for tuning in Keep the plates spinning, stay safe, and uh, I'll talk to you again very soon. Thanks very much. Bye for now.